So in the temple of God, what does St. John say? All right. This is from my my copy of the life of my life in Christ. And this is kind of what I do to my life in Christ. The poor book's not, not, not a lot of pages free of my pencil. As God is life and diseases and maladies are a deviation from life. Therefore, the touch alone of the first source of life cures us of them. The touch alone cures us. This is why the Savior, who is the life of all, cured and still cures men by his touch alone. Still cures men. Where does he do that? In the church. How? Through the mysteries. In the temple. By his touch, his presence, his Holy Spirit. The same may be said of the change in any contagious objects. At a single sign or single word of the creator the found and founder of everything, they become harmless. Air, water, plants, and animals. Any contagious objects become harmless. How's that, folks? Is that good? Do we got an answer for all of our rationalists? Right? So our rationalists need to listen to St. John. He's not looking at it rationalistically. A rationalist would say that we have to take science and examine it and be afraid because it's contagious and there's no way outside of science to understand this and there's no way God can do anything because... Everything is in the realm of the laws of nature. No, the laws of nature overcome. The laws of nature overcome here by God's touch. So I think that's a good example of the difference between a rationalist and somebody who believes in the presence and the, and the healing touch of God. Number nine, the... Teaching or the idea that the holy la vida, the spoon the, that is used in the Holy Communion in the Orthodox Church, that it uh, can tr transmit viruses and disease. That is something we've seen now introduced in the last year and a half, two years. And you see the picture there of the multiple spoons that were introduced in certain dioceses in certain places in, in the Orthodox world, mainly in the Western world. Uh, and the idea here is that it doesn't matter how you commune. This is the this is the innovative idea here. It doesn't matter how you commune, commune or what you use. And moreover, the spoon or other material that is used for Holy Communion can indeed communicate disease and a virus. And therefore, it is needful for the church to use multiple spoons to block the faithful. Uh, not only that, but to also block the faithful from kissing icons in the same logic, right, that the that the la vida, the spoon upon which the Holy Communion is placed, can infect you. Well, so can the holy icons infect you, right? If you kiss them, so can uh, the priest's hand. So can the holy relics uh, and uh, the anything that's been blessed and it's holy in the altar uh, or in the church. Uh, really, is is a material thing, and therefore it communicates sickness. It communicates disease. And therefore, we should use multiple spoons, or we should block people from high cons, or we should not kiss one one another, of course, because uh, uh, we're not holy, right? We're just sinful. And this is the thinking that has uh, crept in and been adopted by certain uh, prominent people in the Orthodox Church. Let's think about that. Let's reflect on that. Let's hear a few comments from the saints. Most of you here tonight, I think you know the answer to this question. It's not a temptation for you. It's been rejected by the faithful by and large. But it's not always clear why. And we're not going to go in-depth, but we're going to say a few words. First of all, immediately it should come to mind that we have the very Lord himself, the Theanthropos, the God-man, in the Holy Communion as taught by the Holy Fathers of the Church and by the saints of the Church. And we have something analogous here. The spoon carries the body of our Lord. What else carried the body of our Lord and became sanctified and holy because of it? And to this day works miracles and is treasured by the church. The Holy Cross. The Holy Cross. And the faithful run and kiss the Holy Cross as the instrument upon which our salvation was carried out. We venerate it. We don't worship it. We venerate it. And we has never occurred to us and no one has ever said in the history of the church, do not kiss that holy cross. 
because you can become ill. You can become sick. Do not kiss the, the instrument of our salvation, uh, which the Lord sanctified and which by which many miracles throughout the ages have been have been worked. No one has ever said that or uttered that, which would have been considered impious, if not blasphemous. And yet now, suddenly, the rationalists amongst us, and of course, every heretic is a rationalist. That's the common denominator of all heresy and all heretics. They put their rational intellect above the grace and the presence of God. They analyze it as if it was a in a... Uh, laboratory and they had a microscope and they stand in judgment of it as opposed to coming under it and trusting the presence and the action of grace in the life of the church and the stance is diametrically opposed to the stance of those who've been sanctified by that same grace and been made holy and been made lights of the universe that stance is the stance which leads to perdition which says, I am the judge of that which is of God. I am the judge of the holy things. And I can, um, uh, I can put those things under my rational microscope and judge them. That's basically the problem, the heart of the problem for those who approach the holy things in such a way. That's not how the saints approach it. That's not how the saints come. They come with great trust and they feel and they understand and they live the experience of the grace of God. And so let's hear from a saint or two. Now, this is a direct answer taken from the book, My Life in Christ, which I have right in front of me. I can, can tell you the page number. If you also uh, are a lover of St. John of Kronstadt, let me actually share with you the very page number upon which I, by God's grace and providence, uh, this was uh, jumped off the page to me. Uh, not long ago, 145 in this edition of My Life in Christ from Holy Trinity Seminary, uh, the great wonder worker, the great uh, uh, healer and miracle worker, St. John of Kronstadt. You see him there, an icon and an image. Uh, he says the following as an answer to those who would doubt the grace of God and the presence of God. As God is life, he says, and diseases and maladies are a deviation from life. I remember some rational academic theologians speculating about viruses in a way that would be totally at odds with what St. John just said. Diseases and maladies are a deviation from life. Therefore, the touch alone of the first source of life cures us of them. This is why the Savior, who is the life of all, cured and still cures men by his touch alone. And here's the key line. The same may be said of the changes in any contagious objects. At a single sign or single word of the creator and founder of everything, they become harmless. Air, water, plants, animals. Any contagious objects become harmless. Let's imagine that... The spoon has some contagious element. It becomes an object that could be contagious, could, could, could infect someone. The saint is telling us that no matter what, the touch of the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ makes this harmless. And this is exactly what we have always taught. What do we teach? That the laws of nature are suspended. In the virgin birth, in the incarnation, in every continuation of that incarnation, which is the body of Christ, which is all the grace of God in the church, the laws of nature are suspended. God overcomes the laws of nature. That is physios taxis in Greek, right? It's, it's overcome. It's not in effect. And this is exactly what the saint is telling us here. The touch alone cures us. That which is contagious becomes harmless. This is the faith of the saints. This is the witness of the saints. And therefore, it is absurd and blasphemous to imagine that the very instrument upon which we are receiving the body and blood of our Lord is, is going to be that which gives us death. It is tragedy that such ideas have crept into the minds of Orthodox Christians and are promulgated, and that we live according to that rationalist faithless, graceless view of the things of God. 
Like these, this la vida, this spoon goes into the chalice, into the body of, and blood of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. And it is then inserted in our mouth and we stand in fear. We stand in fear. We have uh, the great uh, saint and theologian uh, of, of the church, uh, Saint uh, Gregor the theologian, who tells us the following about fear, which I did not unfortunately include in the PDF, but I can add it. And he says the following, there is nothing worse than to fear something more than God. And over this fear become, instead of a servant of truth, a traitor to the teaching of truth and faith. Let me repeat that because I don't have it on the screen. Um, let's see if there's a way I can get it on the screen. I don't think so right this second. I don't want to waste our time. I will put it in the PDF for all those who are patrons and who uh, who will join us uh, in the uh, in, in Patreon, uh, that will be accessible in the PDF. There is nothing worse than to fear something more than God. And over this fear become, instead of a servant of truth, a traitor to the teaching of truth and faith. Okay, let's move on to another saint who tells us how we should stand and what relationship we should have to the temple of God, which of course includes the holy things it includes the holy la vida saint gregory saint gabriel i should say of georgia the great ascetic of georgia uh wonder worker confessor of the faith in, uh, during communism uh real father of georgia in the last 50 years uh and beloved of the of the of the people of god there we've had the blessing to go and venerate his tomb uh and miracles have been worked uh, just recently at his tomb according to what i've uh, learned so saint Gabriel says the following to us. Again, there are many such quotes. We're just giving you a few, uh, which should be sufficient to put you on the right, narrow, and royal path with regard to this question. If you knew how great there is in the temple, if you knew how much blessing comes during divine liturgy, of course, communion is the center of divine liturgy, right? Then you would gather up even the dust from the floor, let alone the dust from the, if there was such uh, any dust on the la vida, the spoon, the dust from the floor of the church to wash your face with it. Does that sound like someone who's in fear of getting sick? Does that sound like someone who's in fear of uh, contagious elements from the holy temple? Uh, as if just now with COVIDism, we've just begin to discover that there's such a thing as germs or people can get, of course, it's always been this way. So there's, there's nothing new here that we need to say, well, it doesn't apply what St. Gabriel is teaching. Of course it applies. So St. Gabriel and St. John will have to do for our answer to this, because we have 10 things to uh, speak to you about. Господи Боже, Отец наш, и хвалим 
Слава Отцу и Сыну и Святому Духу и ныне и пресно и во веки 